What is going on guys? Let's just dive into this one, shall we? Yes, I know most people think that Facebook employees are spoiled by the sheer amount of free food and swag, as well as all the other endless benefits that seem to come with the role. And you're not wrong, but it doesn't end there. It doesn't end with just all of the non-technical stuff, but there's a lot of ways that data engineers and software engineers at Facebook are significantly spoiled, and I'm sure at other fangs, by the sheer amount of support they get, not only in terms of infrastructure, but also processes that really are a game changer. So let's dive into some of these benefits that you will get as a data engineer at Facebook that honestly don't exist at a lot of other companies. First, let's talk about data being generally well integrated. Now, for those of you who maybe work at other companies, you often have to join data from different systems together. I've had to do this. And when I had to do it, an example I always use is having to connect a finance system to a project management system. Now, now, there was an ID that supposedly both systems shared. One was called project ID, the other was called project number. The problem was project number in the project management system was a free text or open text field, meaning you could put whatever you wanted. And this meant sometimes I did get the project ID. Sometimes I got the project ID, comma, another project ID, comma, another project ID. Okay, maybe we can kind of parse this out, but occasionally I would get the project budget put into the project number field, as in the amount of money that the project had was being called the project number. So we had to go through a whole painful process of basically retraining the entire PM staff just to put in the right project ID into that field. That took something that should have been a five second thing where I just had to write join two different fields to each other into a multi-week project which had to get approved. Now let's flip that over to Facebook, where honestly, when you go internally at a lot of their systems, everything is integrated at the application level for the most part. All of the different applications talk to each other. They either share similar IDs or worked with them to the point where in our layer, the analytics layer, we'd often have to remove different IDs if they were like not necessarily duplicates, but essentially the same ID representing similar entities. That way, analysts would know which one we're really considering the core ID. And this was both great for data engineers who could then, you know, easily join tables across multiple different uh, domains, as well as for software engineers, because it was just so easy for them to connect different systems together, because they could always know that there was gonna be something somewhere, either due to the fact of the entity layer that we had, um, or some of the internal software solutions that we were using, like Salesforce, where we just knew how to kind of pull out that information and join it across different systems. But of course it doesn't stop there. If you are a data engineer at almost any other company, especially a startup, when it comes to infrastructure management, that's likely on you. You're gonna be the one that has to manage and spin up um, different systems, whether it be in the cloud or in some sort of Kubernetes pod, you're gonna be the one managing it. Whatever you want to do, that's your role. Facebook, you had a whole data infra team. In fact, every component in the data infrastructure probably had its own team. We had the data swarm team that just managed data swarm, which is like Airflow. You know, we had like the Presto team. We also had a team that was just managing and building out our data catalog. All of that was managed for us. So you never had to even think about how you were putting out code or where it was gonna live. You knew you could take your uh, DAG, push it and get it committed. And then it would just automatically get picked up by the rest of the infrastructure. Add to that, we also had an ops team that would often take care of any pipelines that often failed, especially if it just needed to get restarted. They would be around the world. So we had multiple teams um, in different places so that 24 seven, if a pipeline failed, they would be a tier one kind of IT support to that pipeline and just try to restart it. If it kept failing, then it would come to you. But again, and there was just all the support, both in infrastructure and in teams and operations that made your job easier. Next, let's talk about a recent article I put out about onboarding in my newsletter, which if you'd like to sign up, I usually put it in the comments below. It's usually the first pinned one. Onboarding at most companies is pretty hectic. I mean, I know plenty of crazy examples where some people didn't even get access to systems that they were supposed to get access to for hundreds of days. I've seen comments on a recent post that I had as well, where someone didn't get access to systems they were supposed to have access to for over hundred days. And that's not even personally that uncommon. Sometimes you get access to a system or a database and you realize it's not even the right system. You might not even get your laptop in some cases. Uh, depending on you know how the whole IT process works. But then you go to Facebook and day one, not only do you have your laptop all set up, it's synced with your phone, synced with all your applications. You already have access to all the systems you need. Any applications you do likely need to download, they have an internal app store that essentially you just download it all. And from there you have a three to four week 
analytics bootcamp or data engineering bootcamp, depending on who you are, where you just learn all of Facebook's various systems. You commit your first bit of code pretty much day one. You get comfortable with tools like Dayswarm and DieQuery, which is essentially like Snow Sight. And again, you have all this time to just get familiar before you even have to be productive. I remember being so stressed my first month because honestly, you don't do anything in terms of productivity. You're not putting out code and you're not really expected to. You're really just expected to glean as much information as you can about Facebook and its systems, and eventually you'll get plugged into your team. And with this whole onboarding process, it just gives you so much time to get comfortable in your new position. And by the time you join your team, all you're really focusing on is what your team values and less specifically about technology. I honestly don't think I asked too many questions about the data we were working on immediately because we had iData, which was essentially our data catalog. And that helped manage so much of, well, my questions and understanding of all of the various data pipelines. And that helped facilitate me getting up to speed with all of the various data pipelines pipelines and tables and uh, dashboards that we were managing because you could kind of see what was actually happening in all of these different data pipelines. I could see the lineage really easily all in one place rather than having to go into multiple documents and having half of them be outdated, dropped or created by pipelines. It automatically was all tracked, everything from columns, column uh, notes, uh, the pipelines that created them, the pipelines that depend on them, the dashboards that depend on them, who was actually looking at them, all of these things were answered for me. I didn't have to look in any other documentation that was static. But of course it doesn't end there with just employees, but also interns. When I was an intern at a hospital, honestly, I don't think they knew what to do with me immediately. It took them a little bit to figure out exactly what my project was. And by the time they figured it out, the person that was supposed to be training me quit. It was kind of not a great experience. And I've heard plenty of other people who've had similar experiences where they kind of just get thrown around different little bits and odds and ends here and there. Facebook's intern process is very different. I know I got to be an intern manager, so I went through it firsthand, at least as the person managing the intern, which was a lot more work than I realized because we try to make it as easy for the interns as possible. Not in terms of making it easy and not giving them a difficult problem, but making sure that they will succeed on whatever problem we give them. So that's kind of the key. We don't want to essentially make them build the runway and land the plane. We're just trying to teach them how to land the plane. That's essentially how someone described it to me. So when my manager offered if I wanted to be an intern manager, I said yes with about, I think like a week before we had to like have all of the information about the project we were gonna give our intern ready. Like not just like this is the project, which is what I did have. It's also like, who are they gonna be working with? What's the exact plan week by week in terms of what they're gonna be doing? What are their milestones? Um, what are the blockers? Have you talked to everyone? Basically, you have to have this whole entire project and just ready to kind of fill in the gaps. Really, the goal for the intern is to finish this project for a couple of reasons. One, it looks good for them because it's usually what's between them and getting a rehire um, letter because it's usually the thing between them and getting a full-time offer. Also, Facebook was really focusing on making sure we had some sort of project that they could put on their resume, that they'd tell their friends about the great experience they had at Facebook, and then they'd wanna work for us as well. All of this also reflected on me as an intern manager. So I was constantly being hounded by uh, essentially the uh, director or acting director for this whole uh, setup, because as I'm learning to be a manager, there's a manager learning to be a director who's over me. And they definitely spent plenty of time being like, are you making sure your intern is gonna finish this project? What are the blockers? Oh, these are the blockers. What are you doing to fix it? So definitely there was a lot of pressure on me, the intern manager to make sure, hey, this intern better succeed because if not, it also kind of looks bad on you. So we really try to make sure it's a great experience for the intern. And honestly, my intern was amazing. They got a, a higher back letter. In fact, I just heard they might be joining right now. So that's really exciting from my perspective. But it really is such a well-coordinated experience across all of their various internships. And I'm sure some people didn't have great internships, but overall, it's definitely one of the better organized intern experiences that I've Scene. Finally, I do think a lot of the fangs have a decently clear cut kind of path to go from essentially an IC3, IC4 to some sort of like IC5 or IC6 in terms of growth. So I think growth is a little more clear for engineers at most big tech companies. It's not always, you know, there's always complaints about, I, I think it's usually the jump between IC4 and IC5, but overall, I do think there's a little less ambiguity at large tech companies in terms of what you're expected to do. Now, part of that is dealing with ambiguity. So it's kind of a catch 22, right? Like it's clear of what you need to do. And part of it is, is dealing with an ambiguous project, which is referenced in the Pragmatic Engineers uh, article about Facebook, which if you'd like to kind of take a look at it, I'm gonna put a link below just cause I really found it 
a great read and honestly covering more things than I would probably even cover about working at Facebook. So if you really want to know everything there is to know about Facebook, I, I, I check it out. But in all fairness, like they give a pretty clear cut set of expectations in terms of what growth is. It doesn't mean it's easy. In fact, in that article, there's a great quote that I'm gonna put up here, where it said, a lot is put on your back. You're expected to solve problems yourself in a way that some people might not see as fair. One typical thing you might hear from managers is, as an E5, you're expecting to do X, even if X means read between the lines of this specific cultural, political thing at Meta that you have no experience or context with. The implication being that if you don't, you might get a bad review, which can lead to eventual termination. And that's very true. There's always stress around PSE or our performance review cycle. But overall, there's again, a little more clarity in terms of kind of what's expected. It's not super clear, but it's kind of clear. That I think that's sometimes more frustrating. Sometimes that was not a spoiled moment, I, I will be honest. Anyways, that's working at Facebook. There's a lot of benefits that you'll get as an engineer. You can love it or hate it. Some people don't like the fact that most of their infrastructure is taken care of. They wanna be the ones building it. They are the archetypes of people that love building like platforms and infrastructure and doing more than just essentially data pipelines. But for other people, it's great because they focus more on the business value and that's kind of what they're looking at anyways. Hopefully this gave you some interesting insight into working at Facebook and some of the ways that they're spoiled besides just the free food and endless swag. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.